On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2019. We're going to be taking a look at Morissette Amon, and she's going to be performing Rise Up. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So Morissette was not a singer I had heard before uh, being asked to analyse this particular performance and it's on a radio show, I believe, Wish 107.5, something like that. So we'll get her up on screen and I think this might have been a request to do with pitch correction, but the great thing about this, at least the first part of this video, is that we can enjoy a live vocal. This is fully live, and we are going to be watching it and analysing it. Of course, if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it, there's a link in the description below as always, so click on that. I'm going to be jumping into this and pointing out a few things, but just enjoying the voice, and then we'll get into another bit afterwards. <laughs> but, but we'll get there when we get there. Let's see how Morissette gets on. You're broken down and tired Of living life on a merry-go-round And you can find a fighter But I see it in you, so we go work it out Seven, five. We can walk it out. Move mountains. And I'll rise up. I'll rise like the day. And I'll rise up. I'll rise on a prayer. I'll rise up. And I'll do it a thousand times again. I'm just going to jump in here because this is a voice. <laughs> this is one hell of a voice. And the thing about this performance, I mean, she's just got total control. Well, when you talk about great singers, this is a great singer without doubt. And the great thing about hearing a live vocal from 2019 Usually, this kind of thing, if it, if it weren't on a radio show, it would have been probably manipulated, unfortunately, and pitch corrected. Whereas, the great thing about performances that are on radio shows, they're generally live, even though there are some stations here in the UK that are starting to pitch correct live performances on their radio shows. You know, so, yeah, it's a little bit um, of a shame when that happens. But anyway, what I want to do in this performance is point out things like this. I always say that great singers, and what I'll do is I'm going to zoom in as far as I can zoom here and show you that great singers do this kind of thing. They don't sing on these lines, which are 440 hertz. So when we're listening to a voice that when you're not looking at it, of course, I've isolated the vocal, run it through the pitch monitoring software. I've kind of assumed that you know that I'm going to do that because of all of my videos. But that's what I've done if you're watching the channel for the first time. But it shows you how great voices aren't on these lines all the time. And this is a great example here. And I've taken it all the way back to the beginning. Not that I want this video to go on for years, but just to show you this voice and what it looks like when you compare it to these lines, 440 hertz, which is what pitch correction is calibrated to. So let me let this play through, but also listen to this and don't even look at the screen, but listen to the voice. You're broken down and tired Of living life on a merry-go-round 
So there, according to 440 hertz, we missed one, two, three notes, four notes. You know, we were off pitch. So listening to that, is that what you thought when you heard it? That you thought, oh, hang on, she's missed four notes there. Pretty much, actually, she's flat here as well, so that's five. She's missed five notes in a row there. Bearing in mind the piano that we can hear is tuned to 440 hertz. So you should be able to hear that she's out of key, that she's totally off with her vocal, but this is a natural voice. So you hear the expression that is within the voice rather than thinking, oh, that was wrong. And when we zoom in, look how sharp she was here. Look how sharp she was here. Let me move. Look how flat she was with this note. <laughs> this is what I mean about pitch correction. If you pitch correct two notes in a row, it sounds really weird. Even one note being stuck on this line for any length of time sounds a little bit weird, but it, it can be done now and again, but when you get two notes following each other, that's when it sounds weird. But let's just listen through again. But I, see it in you, so we go work it out. I mean, her intervals are so spot on from a, a natural harmonic perspective. When you listen to this, it sounds pitch perfect. So, I mean, again, I'm just going to zoom in to show you that when I'm talking about being pitch perfect, look at the variation we get between the two notes just in that, the, you know, that phrase that we just heard was so quick and Wish. I mean, <laughs> when you're listening to it and we're so zoomed in, you can't see the lines, you think, oh, wow, that just sounds absolutely perfect. But you can see here, she's a little bit sharp, even again, I don't want to kind of keep on zooming into everything to show you guys. But that last note that sounded spot on, like it couldn't be better, it was flat of 440 hertz. Uh, and, and here's your proof. And it actually went even flatter at the end of that. So again, this is one of those videos could go on for years with me just proving my point about pitch correction. But listen again to this last note. Wish. Uh, you know, that note there, apparently, um, According to 440 hertz, that was off, so it would have been corrected. But look at all of these points at which we're not on these lines, because you're going to need to remember this for a little bit later on in this video, but let's continue. Silence is in quiet. It feels like it's getting hard to breathe. Oh, I can't help but jump into this all the time. Because of the amount of expression in her voice that she's achieving by being out of key by, by singing outside of this restrictive 440 hertz. So this is why it sounds so good. And I know you feel like dying. And allowing her voice to cry. I mean, she just got great vocal technique. You can hear that going into that cry that she's just using the perfect amount of airflow. And again, that's just loads of expression in there. And if you're being Again, really strict with that. It was sharp of the A sharp four rather than being on the note. But it's just not. And a promise will take the world to its feet. Move We can walk it out. Move I mean, great intervals. The way that she's going from one note to the next so quickly and so accurately, you know, the C-sharp 5 here, pretty much spot on. If we zoomed into that, you'd see that she's slightly flat. But then bang on the C-sharp 5 there. And as I've said, it is possible to hit these lines, but not one note after the next note after the next note. So she has hit it once here, but then it's flat the C5. But this is all just expression, expression here. And look at where her voice has gone here, flat by quite a lot, goes sharp and then comes down flat and then adds vibrato. So there is so much going on in that one note that you would not get if it was manipulated. Listen again. Ooh, and I love listening to performances like this because, I mean, first of all, my ear is getting a bit tired of 440 hertz. 
just hearing a natural voice, somebody just being having the freedom to go where they do naturally with their voice, which therefore makes it their unique voice because it's just what their vocal cords do, it's what they do as an artist. So it's great to hear. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be jumping into this uh, for the next a year or two. But when I'm saying about intervals, when you're hearing these high notes, again, they sound spot on. For you, for you, for you. And I just want to try and keep this on screen so that you can see that the F5 is actually flat, but it doesn't matter and then she's actually sharp because her intervals are so solid that just keeping it this tight when we go to the f5 again later on she's flat again but she's in exactly the same place that she was naturally with her vocal previously so she's got this consistency within her voice for her own intervals just being spot on sounding pitch perfect the whole time because her voice always goes to that same place and it's not being forced to that place but it's just how good she is at maintaining pitch but maintaining the emotion within her vocal so that that pitch happens all the time because the emotion is the same when she's gone back to that note. <laughs> So I hope that you're taking this in, the fact that we're below the line here. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how anyone can not say that this is just an amazing voice because we know that it's natural as well. But then also on that flip side, for people that say about singers, oh, if they use pitch correction, who cares? But I would say, but why not appreciate this? Because you can tell that this is on a totally different level. This is just... A, a one in a million voice and the amount of work it's taken to get to this point if you're then saying well just get another singer and pitch correct them so that you know they haven't had to put in the same kind of work to get to this kind of level that's all the same just put it all in the same barrel it all still counts for me yeah it, it's, it's a world apart you know having a natural vocal and then having other vocals that you listen to that have been pitch corrected so they're at that level of pitch accuracy that well, first of all they sound false but it's at that level of pitch accuracy where they're not able to do that themselves because they literally don't have the ability to do it and look at this when i say about great singers have got the potential and they can hit a note dead on the line of 440 hertz it will occasionally happen this is the first time we've seen it in this whole performance so it's happened once and i mean the proof is in the pudding here that the next note is then flat of this line it's slightly below it and that's what flat means it's not, it's not an insult um, to a singer it's literally saying flat is below sharp is above a great singer like this she'll hit an a sharp four because that was just the best frequency to hit at that time and then that was the best frequency as well but it's not on the line let's continue
1075. And there we have it. There might be a little bit actually at the end. Again and again mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a little bit at the end, just a bit of vocal extemporization. You feel like saying to all of the great singers out there, please stop pitch correcting your vocals. Because when they are great singers, you know, this is just so far and above a pitch corrected vocal, it's ridiculous. In fact, I would say that pitch correction takes away from great singers. It makes their voices sound worse and not even just a little bit worse. It makes them sound significantly worse as a singer because first of all, you can hear it's been applied. So people ask the question, well, why do you need pitch correction? Maybe you can't hit the notes. So it puts doubt on the ability to hit the pitches accurately. But then all of the expression that you get with this kind of thing of being below the note and above the note, especially being slightly above it, it gives even more angst to it, having that slight, you know, edge of being sharp of the note. So now we're going to jump into Morissette's version of Oh Holy Night. And this was actually another video that I was asked to check out. We'll have a look at it as well. And if you've been paying attention to what I've been saying, you might be able to spot something. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. So I'm going to jump in here throughout that whole last live vocal. Morissette hit the line once. And as soon as we start this performance, we're on the line. And as we go a little bit further on, you can see down at the bottom here, we're on the line again. So she's doubly as accurate in the first five seconds of this performance than our whole vocal performance we just listened to, but let's continue. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Only the world and sin and error power another line and if you're looking at this you'll see how we're regularly now dissecting the line with these notes so in short this is pitch corrected and it's just basically backing up what I said a minute ago if you've got a great voice don't pitch correct it because it makes it sound worse and people like imagine if I'd only looked at this video And I'd have to say that she pitch corrects her vocals and it's a fact, but she pitch corrects her vocals, but also has vocals that aren't pitch corrected. That that it's just a great voice. So this is the problem that it's, it's a lottery as to which video you check out. If one person saw this and they can hear 440 Hertz like me, they think, oh, I don't like pitch corrected singers. I'd rather listen to a singer who's got a great voice naturally. That's the problem, but we will listen on to this. And now when we're looking at these lines, I don't know if is this the fourth or the fifth line that we've hit so far. And because this has been pitch corrected, I mean, obviously it sounds dodgy when it's on 440 hertz on any held note that doesn't have vibrato, but because it's pitch corrected, it means that it's a manual process. So I say they or she has allowed her voice to go to where it did in some places, but for any time where the note is held, it's being stuck to 440 hertz. A thrill of home. And th- I mean, that really backs up what I'm saying about when you have two notes that are on the line, it sounds weird because she's already proven to her voice, no, to, to, to us, her voice doesn't do this. Her voice might hit a line, but then it'll be sharp or be flat of the next note. So this is why it sounds weird because we know for a fact 
In real life, her voice doesn't do this. It doesn't hit two lines in a row. So it means that one of these notes has been forced to this line, which is why it sounds weird, because it's making something happen that didn't happen. Listen again. It just has that dodgy talk box sound to it. Uh, and there, sometimes with pitch correction, you get a bit of a flip sound. When it's so quick, it, it sounds like that auto-tune flip. Because there's zero sense uh, variation on where it's going, the destination's already been decided, so the, the plugin's going to take it there, literally in a split second. You can see how quick it takes it up there. So rather than just overshooting, which again, we know that Morissette does that, that she goes a little bit sharp. Here, that hasn't been allowed to happen, so it's gone straight to the destination and stopped. And that's why, again, it sounds unnatural, because her voice doesn't do this. And I know that people who have watched my Carrie Underwood video, they know what I'm waiting to get to. This held no, and we already know what it's going to look like. A new and glorious <laughs> As predicted, actually, yeah, that is so pitch corrected, but they've done it to the second note as well. Uh, let me just take it back. And we know it's going to be happening again. On this whole chorus, we know we're just going to be seeing these straight, you know, outside of any vibrato, we know we're going to hear 440 hertz. That's actually plotted it an octave higher than it should have done, but the frequency is still registering as 440 hertz. <laughs> so, yeah, wrong octave, but again, this is pitch correction. It's going to stick it to the frequency. And there, she was actually allowed to go sharp. And this is the thing that I think people are starting to do now, but it's not enough. They're trying to allow a little bit of pitch inaccuracy through to pretend that all the rest of it was natural, that, oh, you know, she is human because she missed a note, but all of the other notes are absolutely spot on 440 hertz. So I think that there's some kind of recognition here that they know that it might be obvious, so let's try and throw people off the scent. But, you know, the problem is they don't know that the technology exists for people like me to show you on a screen 440 hertz and a pitch corrected vocal so yeah sadly people think they're going to hide it by people listening to it and think oh that was a little bit off so it must not be pitch corrected but as you guys know we get into the details here so we always go for the objective conclusive proof uh, to either prove or disprove any particular theory but anyway i'm just gonna scroll on like this <laughs> I was going to I was going to say that you'll see that there are notes on the lines all the time throughout this performance and then you know sure enough there's again a held note there that's absolutely bang on and as we go through you'll see this just straight on these lines so it's good because it proves my point that listening to a natural vocal is night and day to listening to a pitch corrected vocal it's just sad that even someone like Morissette has pitch corrected vocals because you think in in what world, obviously, unfortunately, the modern day world. But in what world would a singer like this need to do anything to her voice to make it better? <laughs> because it's already as good as you can get. Uh, I mean, I could be talking about this all night anyway. That is tonight's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Rock!